Hi, welcome to Big Time Paranormal. My name is Larry Gonzalez, and I'm very grateful that you're here. We have quite a bit of things in the news this this week. Uh, not so much paranormal, but very odd stories. And so we're going to get to them right away because, like I said, we have a lot of things to cover today. So today we had came across this article about a Chinese man who's growing a nose on his forehead. And that sounds a little odd, so I thought, what the heck? Check out this video. A Chinese man has had a new nose grown on his forehead following a traffic accident last year. These pictures from Chinese state-run media CCTV show Xiaolian, 22, at a hospital in Fuzhou, Fujian province as doctors check on his progress ahead of transplant surgery. The patient underwent the unusual procedure after he neglected nasal trauma treatment following the traffic accident in August 2012. He only had basic medical treatment rather than plastic surgery immediately after the accident. Doctors had to take the extreme measure after an infection corroded the cartilage of his original nose, making it impossible for surgeons to reconstruct it. The new nose is grown by placing a skin tissue expander onto his forehead, cutting it into the shape of a nose, and planting a cartilage taken from his ribs. Surgeons say the new nose is in good shape after nine months of growth, and the transplant surgery could be performed soon. Anyway, uh, the next story is, is odd as well. This guy, now I heard about this on the news and I couldn't believe it when somebody on the radio was saying that this guy was blue and that he looked like Papa Smurf. And I thought, well, how blue can this guy really look like? Oh, I found out he is blue. And I'm not talking about the blue man group in Vegas. This guy, blue. Check this out. Good morning, Rash. I'm Carissa Lathan. 62-year-old Paul Carrison, the man with blue skin, passed away Monday. Carrison shocked the world five years ago when he came forth as the man whose skin had literally turned blue. Carrison died of a heart attack and a stroke in a Washington hospital on Monday. Daily Mail reports the blue skin was actually a side effect from a silver compound Carrison used on his face to treat dermatitis. While silver does not have antibacterial properties, the U.S. Department of Health Health and Human Services says the FDA does not consider colloidal silver to be safe or effective in treating diseases. Kerrison shot to fame after an appearance on the Today Show and it was apparent his health was wavering. Here he is in 2009 discussing some health issues. A blocked artery that, that required stents being put in place and uh, prostate cancer. My PSA numbers are way down now so Presumably, that's a good thing. In that interview, Kerrison said if he'd known what the colloidal silver would do to his skin, he likely would have never used it. I'm sure that he, uh, he would have done something different if he could have. Unfortunately, the, the poor guy passed away from a heart attack. Um, I'm sure it had something to do with the fact that he was treating himself instead of going to a doctor. So, who knows? Anyway, now this story is out of Pakistan. They just recently had a huge earthquake. Now, the earthquake was so big that it actually caused an island to form right off the coast of Pakistan. And one of the scientists said it's actually like a mud volcano. It bubbled up. And chances are it's going to eventually erode and disappear on its own. But take a look at this video. And strong aftershocks, shock, shocks rather, continue to shake southwest Pakistan this morning after a massive earthquake. It registered a magnitude of 7.7, hitting yesterday near the border with Iran. At least 210 people are dead, hundreds more are hurt, thousands are homeless, and communication is spotty. And take a look at the true power of this quake. Pakistani wow. officials say it formed a new island off the country's southern coast. The landmass is visible from shore. It is about 100 feet long 
and 60 feet high. Incredible. It is a month. I saw this video and I just couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. yeah, a new island. Mm -hmm. Now, you know what's odd is that I remember years ago my brother was saying, I used to buy real estate. They don't make any more land. Uh, apparently, they do. Anyway, that's an odd story. Now, the story goes from this world to Mars. Now, it's always been suspected that Mars has had water in the past. They found some evidence by erosion and, and other things. Well, they recently found out that the soil has 2% water. So take a look at this video. We found water on Mars! There's water on Mars! Ah! Anthony here for D News. And ah! Water on Mars! <clears throat> okay, sorry. So, haven't we found water on Mars before? Well, kind of. It's always been like, hey, this looks like ice and we think it just melted. Or, here's some clay, which means water existed here at some point. No, this is different. Curiosity just found that Martian soil is 2% water. So a sample of sand was taken from Rock Nest, which is this area in the Gale Crater. Curiosity analyzed it using an instrument called SAM, a kind of test chamber inside the rover that has a gas chromatograph, a mass spectrometer, and a laser spectrometer. Puts the sand into SAM, heats it to 835 degrees Celsius, and out comes water, along with some carbon dioxide. Liquid water means life. Life in a way that we recognize potentially existed on Mars sometime in the past. Maybe not as complex as all the stuff that we have on Earth, but microscopic life like bacteria and other tiny organisms. Yes, there is reason to believe life once existed on Mars. It also means that we potentially have a source of water to drink when we get there, because you know we are going there. So. The downside. Remember a few months back when there were reports that Mars is covered in poisonous dust? The orange dust is called regolith and it's full of nasty stuff like perchlorates, which are used here on Earth as rocket fuel and can mess up your thyroid gland if you're exposed to them. It also has silicates, which can mix with the water in your lungs and turn into chemicals that cause respiratory diseases. So separating the Mars water from all that stuff in the soil is not going to be an easy task, but it could be done. And it could mean a supply of safe drinking water for future Mars colonists, or if you believe Doctor Who, it will contain the sentient virus that will cause their demise. It's a mixed bag, really. Water on Mars, you guys! This is exciting! If you want to know more about the findings, intrepid space doctor reporter Ian O'Neill has the full story on the Discovery News site. And Along with some of the other problems that they're going to have with uh, calling on Mars, at least they have the idea that they can get water from the soil. And like they said, whether it's water, there could be life, and who knows if there's underwater streams or oceans or, you know, in caves or whatever. So this will be really interesting once we get there. And we are going there. There's no doubt about it. Uh, now, the next story has to do a little bit closer to home, not quite on Earth. It's the moon. There is a lot of speculation about the moon. There is, there's a lot of theories that the moon came from the Earth, um, of course, there's those that say, well, there's minerals on the moon that don't match the Earth. Uh, there's talk about that the moon is actually a um, combination of two other small moons combining. That's why you have the moon looking a little different, you know, the big gray spot versus the lighter gray spot. Uh, there's, ever, there's even theories that the moon came from Venus or whatever. But one of the things that scientists have found out or theorized that the moon is actually uh, younger than they expected by 100 million years. Check out this video. New research points to the possibility that the moon is 100 million years younger than anybody thought. Current wisdom holds that the moon was formed following a massive collision between Earth and a mysterious planet. The event is said to have occurred 4.56 billion years ago. After taking a closer look at some lunar rocks using newer, more accurate equipment, a group of scientists now believe that the moon came into being more like 4.45 billion years ago. 
According to one of the researchers, planet and satellite dating is tough as many of the reliable telltale signs of age are covered up by the formation itself. Becoming a moon or planet can take millions of years, and the process is a violent one involving lots of collisions and heat strong enough to melt iron. Oftentimes, whatever age-determining evidence survives is buried deep, and available technology isn't always up to the task of finding it. As technology marches ahead, so do other sciences. Now the researchers are left to grapple with what the moon's age change means for the creation theories of Earth itself. You know, I, since starting Big Time Paranormal, uh, I've had to read a lot of different things and examine a lot of different things. And I really do believe that the history of the Earth is much different than we've been told. Uh, I think you can find truth everywhere, uh, including the Bible, but then you have scientists that have their own theories on how evolution and so on. I think there's a lot of truth in what everybody says, but there's also some history, and the moon, I think, is one of those mysterious places, but the universe is full of mystery, so who knows? Maybe one day we'll find out. So that's pretty much it for the news. Now we're going to go into a special report. Now the first report that that we're going to cover is actually Black Eyed Kids. Now Black Eyed Kids is uh, a phenomenon that the team leader that my wife, my daughter, and I were part of out of Sacramento it, one of the co-founders is Christina George. Now, Christina George had related a story about her uh, encounter with black-eyed kids. And I thought, you know, that's a pretty interesting story that she told. And I thought it would be interesting for you guys to get familiar with it. Now, if you're not familiar with black-eyed kids, here's a little bit of a documentary. It's just over four minutes long. Sorry it's a little long. I tried to find something that's shorter but couldn't quite find something. So check this video out.
Black Eyed Kids. Now, you know what's interesting is I'm starting to see reports here and there of white eyed kids. There was a story, um, I think it was this past summer, where a family was out camping out in Oregon, not far from the coast, and a young girl, I believe it was, came out of nowhere. And they thought that she was part of another group or whatever. But when they looked at her, and she had the same kind of mannerisms as a black-eyed kid, but she was a white-eyed kid. You know, white. White. Not black. White. So that's a phenomenon that's, that, seems to be, that seems to be getting a little bit more play. So uh, if I find out any more about that... I'll make sure to let you guys know, but I'm finding that to be a very interesting thing, especially since you know we don't know if they're hybrids, alien-human hybrids, demonic. We don't know. We just don't know. But uh, if you ever, if you know who Christina George is, if you happen to see her at a convention or call into her radio shows, you know you might want to ask her about the black-eyed kid experience that she had. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Now, we're going to go from that to, now that we're going into October, Halloween is just a month away. And so what we want to do is cover some of the movies. Uh, for the next few weeks, we're going to cover movies from each decade. Uh, and I'm not going to say, you know, let's uh, start in 1930 and work to 1931, then 32. No, I'm going to only pick two, maybe three movies a week from different decades and uh, cover those. And there's tons of really, really good movies and there's some that's, okay, they're really, really awful. But the first one we're going to talk about is a Universal Studio movie. Now, this was made in 1931 by an actor that you know of by the name of Bela Lugosi. Now, what was interesting about Bela Lugosi was that he was 49 years old when he took on the role. Now, the, now the studio didn't want him originally. They wanted Lon Chaney, who played Phantom of the Opera and so on. But he was under contract with MGM. And unfortunately, about the time that they wanted to shoot the movie Dracula, uh, Lon Chaney passed away. I mean, not Lon Chaney, I'm sorry. Yeah, Lon Chaney. I was thinking Lon Chaney Jr., Lon Chaney passed away. So after taking a look around, they found Bela Lugosi, which turned out to be probably one of their best decisions ever. So here is a scene from Dracula, 1931. Check it out. Van Helsing. Now that you have learned what you have learned, it would be well for you to return to your own country. I prefer to remain and protect those whom you would destroy. You are too late. My blood now flows through your veins. She will live through the centuries to come, as I have lived. Should you escape us, Dracula, we know how to save Miss Mina's soul, if not her life. If she dies by day, but I shall see that she dies by night. And I will have Carfax Abbey torn down stone by stone, excavated a mile around. I will find your earth box and drive that stake through your heart. Come here. Come here. So the movie was a big success. And the studio was very, very excited that they found an actor with this great accent to go along with the character. Now, Bela Lugosi actually played Dracula on stage. So he had time to actually smooth out the character so when he actually filmed it in 31 he was well familiar with the character now the next movie we're going to 
go over is actually a movie made in 1948. Now, this one is kind of a mixed genre. It's a horror mix with comedy, and it's Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Now, I picked the clip that I picked for this for a reason. Bella Lugosi, like I said in the in the other movie, was 49 years old. Here, he's 66 years old. Now, between the Dracula movie in 31 and this one, he had not played Dracula ever again. Now, he did play vampires here and there, but nothing to the stature of Dracula. So it was pretty it was pretty neat that he was able to come back and do the role of Dracula at 66 for this. Now Abbott Costello meets Frankenstein actually brought the three main universal monsters together, Dracula, Frankenstein, and the werewolf. The you had Lon Cheney Jr. as the werewolf, uh Bella Lugosi as Dracula. Now Boris Korloff turned it down originally to because he felt that uh, it was it was demeaning to the horror genre to do comedy and later on he kind of changed his mind he did some publicity for the movie and so on but here's a scene from Abbott Costello me Frankenstein Count Dracula sleeps in this coffin but rises every night at sunset Chick is right. This is awful silly stuff. Dracula. Chick! What's the matter now? You know that person you said that there's no such person? Yes. I think he's in there, in person. I was reading a sign over here, this one down here. Yeah. Dracula's legend. All of a sudden I heard... <laughs> That's the wind. It should get oiled. Listen, stop reading this thing. That's a lot of phony baloney to fool McDougal's customers. Now fold up that canvas. And get busy. Come on. Dracula can change himself at will into a vampire bat flying about the countryside. Flying. Listen, you're making enough noise to wake up the dead. I don't have to wake him up. He's up. I saw a hand. You saw a hand? Uh-huh. Where? Right over there. Let me see it. Right over there. Where is it? I saw a hand there. You don't know what you're talking about. You're all excited reading this legend. Now listen. Listen, Wilbur. I know there's no such a person as Dracula. You know there's no such a person as Dracula. But does Dracula know it? Now listen. So there you go. Now, Universal made really good movies. The original, I mean, they're still the standards of today. When you look at a lot of the horror movies of today, uh, the werewolf was remade just a few years ago um, with uh, Anthony Hopkins. Uh, it was I, I enjoyed it. I did. It. They had the werewolf looking more like the Long Cheney Jr. Uh, werewolf. Now, you can find any of those online um, I think you could find some of those movies on YouTube as well so take a look at it maybe you even have it in your collection now each week like I said we're going to take a look at different movies next week we're going to take a look at the movies in the 1950s now with those movies you're going to see a slight change in how movies were made when it came to horror and also the birth of, of Hammer Films when Christopher Lee takes on the role of Dracula with uh, Peter Cushing as Van Helsing. So we'll be taking a look at the 50s and 60s next week. So join us then. As I had said that I was going to try to get into a Halloween store. It's actually the Spirit Halloween stores. Unfortunately, they just don't want to return my phone calls. And they, the parent company is actually Spencer Gifts. So apparently, I'm just not important enough. Imagine that. But it doesn't mean that there's not other ways to get what I want. 
So we'll figure out something and perhaps we'll get that to you next week. So uh, a few weeks ago I had said that I wanted to ask a question about uh, a YouTube channel where we could play all these older shows on on that channel. And I had gotten a few responses. After talking it over with Julia Di Maria, who helps me on uh, my Facebook page, Big Time Paranormal, and also talking it over with my wife and a couple others, we have decided that we are going to go ahead and create the YouTube channel. We have not decided exactly everything on it. We'll be working on that as time goes by. But I'll let you know when that's going to happen. So that that will be coming out. So, for now, remember to tell all your friends about WWPN, Worldwide Paranormal Network. Let them know every Tuesday night. There's a different guest, and we're right here to talk to you. And if you like this segment, remember, this is just a sliver of what we do on Big Time Paranormal. Come on over. Take a look. And remember, every time you give a like, an angel gets his wings. That's what I was told. Anyway, that's it for this week. Remember, today is your day. Go out and make it happen. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.